my biggest nightmare. The biggest blunder I've done in business. And my definite biggest blunder. So I'm going to preface my talk with the fact that um, entrepreneurship is, is, a, is not easy, we all know that, but um, the fact of the matter is that life of an entrepreneur is a developmental arc, right? So every other time you're learning something new that you thought you knew because the world is forever changing. And this is why I always say to my friends or people around me that you should never romanticize entrepreneurship. It's hard, it's a difficult journey, it is lonely, it is all of that and yet gratifying because for, for the first time, especially me coming from corporate, is that I hold my time, right? But another thing that you can also learn to do is you learn to juggle everything, right? until you become a professional juggler and eventually a circus performer, right? <laughs> so my company uh, is called Mosto Energy and we are in the petroleum industry, so it's oil and gas. Uh, we move uh, fuel in whatever form um, and, and yeah, so that's basically what it is. We are wholesalers, so we're not your normal filling station, so we move a minimum of 1,500 liters. Because uh, if you were found with 1,500 liters, it would be illegal, but you can send it to me and then I'll move it for you. <laughs> um, so, like she said, the MC that you, I spent over 17 years in, in, in corporate as a professional accountant, and I eventually got tired. You get tired of year ends and month ends and week ends, whatever. And, and then, you know, so you just wanted to end eventually. And <laughs> so when I left corporate, I thought I had the oil and gas industry figured out. Like you said, I'm from the financial services. So I would have worked for a bank or an insurance company, investment company, never an oil and gas company, right? So I would have seen their performance and not really know what they do on a day to day. So when I left, I thought I had it figured out. I thought I knew who my suppliers are going to be. I thought uh, my target audience are these people and I who I'm going to associate myself with, who I'm going to work with, who I'm not going to work with. And uh, I practice the business talk. Camera poses, the handshake. I even have a new signature for the business, like it's on brand. So um, then because I'm also a runner, after I quit my job in April, I went and I ran the two oceans, and then I thought, what a wonderful holiday. Maybe I've been two more weeks to purge myself of corporate. And that's what I did. And uh, but remember I said I, I knew who my associates are going to be. So first thing we had a meeting with the associates. Uh, because this is so I'm gonna call them associate A and B, right? Because copy act. So uh, associate A is a friend of mine who's been in business for over 15 years. And he has an associate who was an accountant, so I'm thinking he's going to help me get rid of my business, right? And he was also in oil and gas. So I will learn the business side from A, and then I will learn the actual industry from B. So we sat and had a meeting, and we figured we can't really move 40,000 meters. So 40,000 meters are these trucks that you see on the road going to the filling station. So that carries between 38,000 meters to 40,000 meters, depending on some technicalities like expansion, contraction, all of that. So first, we don't have land, we don't have storage, so what are we gonna do with 40,000 meters? So we figured, let's start small, what can we do? We figured a bowser. So a bowser, excuse me, carries about minimum of 1,000 meters and up to 6,000 meters. So we got one for 2,500 because it's manageable. And these ones are the ones where you will see on the road being pushed by either a bikey or a one ton now or on top of it, like that. And so now we thinking, okay, what do we need to do? We need to buy an asset. So the accountant in me gets excited because accounting equation, assets equals to owners and liabilities. Now I don't have liabilities because I have my own savings. 
and I'm going to have an asset that's going to sweat for me. So the three of us decide, okay, let's now look for a client. And the good Lord, there was a client. So the client is a logistics company who is moving copper, uh, iron, and copper mineral from the DFC through to the Devon port. So we had to figure out, guys, like we're going to move these guys uh, well, from DFC, we're not going to do anything because we can't get into our country. And we even designed a route for them to say, listen, don't go to Zim, because at that time, Zim um, used to hide trucks and steal fuel, because there was a shortage of fuel. So rather move into Zambia. We even had plans to then also move into Zambia because we're going to get paid in US dollars if we're in Zambia. <laughs> and then we, and we got, now we have a, a Bowser. Now it needs to move along because of the logistics company. So we're fueling them as they move. Mm -hmm. So now we need the Bowser to actually move. Fortunately, I have a friend who also had a one tanger that had days. So I get into a, in my personal capacity, get into a legal contract. Note that I never mentioned legal contracts before. So I get into a, I get into an agreement to get uh, to get um, to lease the truck. Also, what it included is that because now we're moving dangerous goods, I need a special permit and special insurance for it. So in my personal capacity, I'm signing off with a new signature. And then, <laughs> so we then move, we start moving the trucks and look, I didn't. I didn't, well I thought, I didn't outsource my fate. I was there, like we would wake up at midnight because the truck is moving from, is now enter South Africa, it's passing Messina, you need to be at a certain point at a certain time. They're moving in fours because security of the material, of the minerals that they're carrying. And uh, I was there, I mean, I got rid of my high heels, I was wearing sneakers and boots, but then pumping everything. I knew there's a pregnancy test for the first time on a fuel. I thought pregnancy tests were for women. And you know, so I'm learning, right? I'm learning and I'm getting immersed in this whole thing. Then I thought my business was growing. You would think that too, but it wasn't. That wasn't the business. That was the project in the business. So fast forward a few days, sometime I'm like, guys, I'm depleting my savings and I haven't had an income from the business with this lease. If this truck is part of the assets, why is the business not paying? Then there was a story, which I think I choose to forget because I didn't do anything about it. And then if I didn't and I told you what the story was, then you would judge me. So then I said, okay, let's move. Then a couple of days later, we don't have a supplier. Why don't we have a supplier? Because we've been taking fuel on credit. Remember guys, we bought Bowser asset. We got uh, fuel stock and owner's equity, my 17 years. And now this doesn't make sense. Me and Associate A are sitting there and thinking, we work, right? We put in fuel in our own cars to get to wherever the point the truck is going, making sure that things are happening. You only just need Associate B. You only just need to follow up and make sure that invoices are paid. You're almost an accountant. So we trust you with this thing. I'm doing the projections, it's looking great, but it's not in my bank account. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, Associate B, meanwhile, with all these stories, the plan not giving us fuel. Fortunately for us, or unfortunately, is that the logistics company went under. So we could always say we failed because they went under, right? But we failed because we didn't have money to actually service the contract. And I wasn't willing to put in more because I had to leave. So we cut our losses, there's no contract. We cut our losses, and to this day, I don't know where the Bowser is, and I need it now. So we cut our losses and retain the friendship because you know, maybe we might need each other later on. So me and Associate A then sit down and say, what are we gonna do? I mean, we've been scammed by our own friend. Um, he's moving into one of those luxurious golf estates at that time. And so clearly, you know, you do the math. <laughs> and we're broke now. Sure. So we then, uh, what is my lesson in that blunder? If I have a target, and my target is a loaf of bread, and I need to sell it, and my, my loaf is not moving, I need to decide I'm going to sell the gold, all right? Mm -hmm. So I need to sell four. Mm -hmm. So what I had done is that I focused on the quarter one. Mm -hmm. So I lost out on three, or three out of four. 
I did not do business development for my business. I, I focused on the, on the project. I did not expand the business. I don't have multiple streams of income within the business. It's easier to say, oh, you need multiple streams of income, you're working and you're doing this. You also need it in business, right? So something should carry something. Then, that was my lesson. Then, uh, we sit down and we're like, okay, fine, what do we do? Let's go do business development. So the other second quarter comes in. But it's not entire long now. So we get and, and we start working on the second, um, on the second quarter of the bread. So now we find a client, clients in Botswana, we're going to get paid in US dollars, great. Uh, we learned our lesson, now we need a contract. So we sign a contract, and the contract, uh, I think I know was, I get it, you say, okay, now these are your responsibilities, check with the money flow, or, or, you know, because it's just past experience. But past experience is not an entire contract. Now, I figured, okay, let me go find fuel from one of the majors, your SASO, your BP, and and, and shell the big brands. So we get an offer that you can take so much and this much, and then we go out, we look for clients. We get a client from Botswana who was servicing mines and filling stations in Botswana, and he can come pick it up in South Africa. They get a tax rebate, so the price is great. Uh, remember that landlock, so they don't get fuel directly to them. And <laughs> so now we're getting contracts, we're deciding back and forth, it's great. And then we wake up one day, we are in 21 days of lockdown. The contract hasn't uh, been effected. So what do we do? We say to client, remember guys, COVID was, hard lockdown was supposed to be 21 days. Yeah. So it didn't matter at that time, because it's only a man. You can wait. I mean, we've been through back and forth with contracts and getting the right price. So we like, okay, it's 21 days, we can wait it out. Ha. Then when we wake up, it's not going to be 21 days anymore. But what is also happening in South Africa at that time is that uh, the ports are closed. Shipment for fuel for the majors is not coming into the country. So whatever it is that they're refining in the country, they are giving it to their brand. I can't believe they're in business, unlike me. So they know that you have a brand and uh, you can't get to my filling station and not find fuel. But who's not the energy? Build up the queue. We need to service and make sure that we have, we're on brand. So now I don't have fuel to settle the contract. Though the borders are open for transport and fuel, you could move into Botswana and deliver. But now they're saying there's a shortage in the country. That's when you guys were getting price hikes. Mm -hmm. Remember, I did a contract this time. But now, remember, I'm selling to you. You are on selling on the other end. So if I don't deliver, your client is a mine. They lose out on production. And if they lose out on production, they need to pay salaries, right? Mm -hmm. They need to find an escape route. Yeah. They need to make money. So it comes back this way. Yeah. And for the major, it's, it's okay, because I signed with them a force majeure, where it says they're not liable for anything that is natural or beyond their control. I don't have it with my client that close. Wow. So I will then have to go into those savings the little reserves before the scan mm -hmm. and and then pay everything. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in a bank balance with a negative. So if I'm in a bank balance with a negative, it also says I do not pay stats in the mm -hmm. I own my vet, I own my company tax. <laughs> it's funny now that it was paid <laughs> <laughs> So and remember guys, I'm an accountant. So I can't go to my friends and say, this is the blunder that I did, because I'm expected to do better and know better, right? Mm -hmm. And then, then, uh, then there's an irony of selling fuel and you don't have fuel in the car to get to your client. <laughs> so now you need, I have to call my sister and ask for an e wallet I have to call the other friend on the other side and call for something, just so that I can get to places. But now remember, it's lockdown, so I need parents to talk to people. You're not talking to people because they're not, every, everyone is not on full capacity, so people are not at work, so you can't really do business development during that time. Yeah. So you have to set up to Zoom, people miss them, and, and, and. And they're still relatively new, so we all make moves there, then the meeting doesn't happen. <laughs> and um, this is hard lockdown. Then people come, they know us. We need a demand. 
in, in South Africa. Can you get them? Me, get into my car, e-wallet, get into the car, go to Boxburg, find some African big men that I don't know. I have no idea why I'm fighting people for something that I do. And I thank God that I did not get that business because I would be on that list at SIU now. Because the numbers looked great, right? We basically multiply the cost by seven, and then that's the cost to, to cash. And it didn't work out. So now I'm in a state where COVID is beyond my control, but the business still has to happen. And I thank God, and this is why I always bring God into my business, because whatever plans that I have, God has greater plans. He gives you the talent so that you can use it. So remember, I'm an accountant, right? <laughs> so Associate A says to me, I'm going back into marketing. So if I'm going back into marketing, I identify the client. A client is a new product in the market. They need to market it, but they also need to price it. Are you able to assist? And that's how I then got, that's how Nostro Consulting was born. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, the lights, no, you guys kept the lights on, but it wasn't enough, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, um, I'm back to being salaried, but I'm coming from a place of negative, so it's not enough. I still need to sit back and say, how am I going to get most of the energy back to normal? Mm -hmm. Or rather, at least get to a point where those 200,000 a month look like they are possible. And I, I think at that point, because there wasn't the stress of no income, negative this, and, and, and such, doing whatever, and I was falling back onto accounts. And remember, I quit my job not to do accounts, but I was doing it for survival. And, um, but my energy and I was able to, um, what is this? I was able to, to think, to, COVID was one of the best things that happened to my company, to be honest, because it forced me to be innovative, it forced me to reinvent, it caused me to answer questions that I didn't want to answer. And um, then with that, with my energies being fine, I then meet an angel, I'll call him an angel, who then says to me, I know, and this is how wonderful God works, is that mm -hmm. this person has always been in my circle, but I never knew him. So when I meet him, he says, I tell him my story. And he says, how much do you need? Guys, I'm a woman. When a man says, how much do you need? I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm not doing that. And then he says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm genuine. How else can I help? I'm like, OK, let's identify the clients that I want to to go to and then if you have contacts let's use the contacts and then uh, cut the long story short guy this guy eventually gave us money for us to clear our sub's debt mm -hmm. and as you know if you're bidding for anything you need that tax clearance mm -hmm. so now we are able to to then bid and actually get work and we are able to get work because we've uh, sorted out our business system, like the systems in the in, in the company to make it a business. We're no longer doing making uh, uh, demask. If you come to me looking for, if I'm selling bread and you're looking for maguina, I'm not going to try and make them for you. I'll mm -hmm. tell you to go next door because that is not my focus. I do not have the time for it. And in my blunders, I think I can take out three lessons from it. Lesson number one is that you do research. Research, research, and it's not just desktop research. I mean, I should have researched on my associates themselves. I should have asked the questions, why are you in oil and gas and yet you failed? Or you not, not failed, that, but you're not where you should have been if you've been in the lab now, one. And another thing, lesson for me is to, your business needs to always answer the why. Why are you doing this? Right? And if it's not at the center, left and right of you at all times, then you fall into traps that someone wants Liguina and you're not acceptable to, mm -hmm. you know? And then another one well, for me was agility. If I did not do that accounting work, I probably would have been in a mental institution now. Mm -hmm. If you're a musician mm -hmm. and you're not getting gigs, mm -hmm. teach the kids how to play the guitar, mm -hmm. you know? have a source of income, at least that for your mental health, mm -hmm. it would work for you. And a bonus lesson for you guys is legal contracts. Mm -hmm. I thought because I was a part accountant, I've read trust uh, agreements. I've, I've 
I've had, I mean, I've read trust agreements and I would know that um, what a contract looks like, mm -hmm. right? And the irony of it is that when you're in a rant and in a rant and, and, and you're in your own dark hole, I mean, my, if you know me, you know that my brother's an attorney. Why didn't I get him to review my contracts? Mm -hmm. It didn't cost me anything, mm -hmm. you know? But for someone else, it might cost you something, but you could batter, you could say, I'll do your books, you do my legal contracts, yeah. you know? So, even, I know people will say it's not worth the paper it's written on, but it's your time, guys. You are spending that time doing whatever it is that you need to do. The least you can do is to threaten someone with a legal suit, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and then get it out of the way. So, yeah, that's my story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.